This video will be on atom and isotopes as part of Module 1, Structure and Properties of Matter, following the HSC Stage 6 Preliminary HSC Syllabus. In this video, we will be looking at the atom itself, what is it, then the Rutherford model, atomic symbols and isotopes, and relative atomic mass. These are the relevant syllabus dot points. The atom is the smallest particle of a chemical which can exist. The atom consists of two main components. It has a nucleus, which is the center, and that is made of protons and neutrons. The protons are positively charged particles, while the neutrons are neutrally charged, making the center positive overall. Surrounding the positive nucleus is what we call a cloud of electrons. Because of the combination of negative charge from the electrons and the positive charge of the protons, Atoms are overall electrically neutral when it comes to the elemental form. Another consequence of the fact that atoms are neutral means that there must be an equal number of electrons and protons. The reason why the atoms do not explode and are held together is because of the electrostatic attraction between the negative charge of the electrons and the oppositely positive charge of the nucleus. This first model of the atom came about as a hypothesis by Ernest Rutherford in 1911 where he proposed that the atom was made of a dense nucleus, and he undertook what we now know as Rutherford's gold foil experiment to help prove this. In the experiment, he took an alpha-emitting source in a box with a cut hole in it, such that the alpha particles would be able to travel in a singular direction towards the gold foil. These alpha particles are a type of radiation which we talk about in the radiation video. These particles themselves have some mass and bombard the gold foil. According to the hypothesis, if the nucleus of the atom where these alpha particles have mass are themselves heavy, then we should see that the alpha particles would pass straight through the gold foil. If they were not heavy, we would expect that they would become deflected by the gold foil and go around in these various directions. So how could we tell where the alpha particles went? Well, the gold foil was surrounded by this sheet of zinc sulfide, which we can see in the blue around here. And they knew at the time a flash of light would be emitted when in contact with these alpha particles. After they conducted this experiment, what they saw was that the majority of particles passed through the gold foil and the flashes of light were seen mostly behind the gold foil, thus proving Rutherford's hypothesis. The Rutherford model is the oldest of the atomic models which we will be studying and provides us with a good baseline understanding of atomic composition. As established earlier, the proton-electron charges neutralize each other. The protons, which make the nucleus quite dense, are similar in size and mass to the neutrons, but are about 1800 times heavier than electrons. Despite most of the mass coming from the nucleus, the majority of the volume of the atom comes from the cloud of electrons, which are about 1800 times lighter than protons and neutrons. Atomic symbols are symbols which we use to help identify elements on the periodic table. They can also identify what we call isotopes, and we will discuss what these isotopes are in a moment. The atomic symbol helps to tell us what the composition of an element is. The atomic number, which is denoted by the letter Z, on the right here, tells us the number of protons of that element. These proton numbers are the ones which we find next to the subsequent elements on the periodic table. So for example, hydrogen, which is number one on the table, has one proton, helium has two, and lithium has three, etc. The mass number is denoted by the letter A, and is the number of protons and number of neutrons added together. This is overall known as the nucleon number. Nucleons being the collective name of both protons and neutrons, and this number will be given to you if a question is asked regarding it. Since we have the mass number, which is going to be the number of protons and neutrons, and we have the atomic number, which is the number of protons, we can calculate the number of neutrons simply by subtracting the atomic number from the nucleon number. Atomic symbols are important for identifying the different types of isotopes. Isotopes are atoms which have the same number of protons, but a different number of electrons. Examples of different isotopes are carbon-12, 13, and 14. They're all carbons, so they all have the proton number 6, which if you don't believe me, you can find carbon is number 6 on the periodic table. Isotopes generally have similar chemical properties, 
because a difference in one or two neutrons is usually only a small percentage of its overall mass. Although this may not be true for something like hydrogen, which can exist as deuterium. Hydrogen only has one proton and no neutrons, while deuterium has one proton and one neutron. Remember that a neutron weighs almost as much as a proton, so deuterium isotope is a variant of hydrogen which has essentially double the mass of hydrogen 1. There are two main classifications of isotopes. They can either be natural isotopes, which are found in nature, and these are generally stable. We can also have artificial isotopes which are manufactured in labs, and these are generally unstable or radioactive. If they are radioactive, we have another classification, or this isn't the main one, called a radioisotope. This is covered again in the radiation video. Because there are often different isotopes of different elements, the masses which are given to you on the periodic table is not the actual mass of the element. These masses which are given to you are actually what is known as the relative mass of all isotopes. Well, what are these relative masses relative to? They are relative to the mass of carbon-12, which takes on the number 12, and are unitless. So for example, carbon-12 has a mass of 12, which is a mass or the nucleon number, and carbon-13 would have a mass of 13, carbon-14 would have a mass of 14, etc. When calculating relative mass, you'll be given a number of percentages for each of the different isotopes, which is known as the relative abundance. Simply take the relative abundance given, multiply it by the masses of each isotopes, and then add them together. Here we will do an example of a relative mass calculation. The question reads, In a sample of chlorine, we find that the relative abundance is 75.8% chlorine-35 and 24.2% chlorine-37. Calculate the relative mass of chlorine. So to do this, we take the relative abundance and multiply it by the relative masses of the isotopes. Chlorine-35 has a mass of 35 relative to carbon-12, and chlorine-37 has a mass of 37 relative to carbon-12. We then multiply both of these by the relative abundances, so 75.8% for 35, and 24.2 for 37. On the top, we end up getting a number of 26.53. And on the bottom, we get a number of 8.95. Then we add the two numbers together to give us a number of 35.484. But notice that the smallest number of significant figures is 3. So we are going to be giving our answer in 3 significant figures, and that will be 35.5. Don't forget to indicate to the marker the number of significant figures.